Now we're going to talk about how health care may shape the election. A couple other things about this, a preview of what to expect in tonight's Bloomberg Washington Post debate. I've got a special guest with me and our host, uh, the president of Dartmouth College, Jim Young Kim. And I, I should point out, we, we're getting, you know, a little sporadic interruption from some of your students and then supporters yeah. of the candidates. We've got some protests with a, a variety of different themes. Absolutely. But I yeah. wanted to start with health care because you're, you're an expert in this. This is what you've studied in your career, mostly global health, but we pay more than most other industrialized nations, almost 16 percent of GDP, but we don't have better health care That's outcomes. Right. That's right. Why is that? Well, you know, the, if you look at the actual data, it's even more frightening than that. We probably spend at least half of what the entire world spends on health care. We spend more than all the other 31 OECD countries combined on health care. And depending on what statistics you look at, we're 20th, 30th, sometimes 40th in the world in terms of our health outcomes. So we have, I think, the best doctors, we have the best hospitals, but the fundamental problem is that we've thought that if you do great science, which we do, better than anyone in the world, and you put it in the hands of trustworthy individuals, our physicians, nurses, pharmacists, who are without question the best in the world, we've lived under the fantasy that at that point you're done. But it's probably the most complicated social system we've ever invented, the hospital, the clinic, healthcare itself. Okay, well, one of the things that happens here at Dartmouth is this Dartmouth Atlas. Right. And if anybody who looks at healthcare knows that this is sort of the gold standard for studying healthcare costs, the way all doctors and hospitals right. get paid keys off Medicare, right. what the rate the government sets, right. everybody else scales off of that. But Medicare doesn't pay very much. The, the head of your hospital here told me he might have to lay off doctors right, right. because they're not being reimbursed enough. So how do you make that work? Well, if you look at the country as a whole, so if you look at Florida, uh, they probably receive close to $15,000 per Medicare patient, whereas in New Hampshire, we receive about 5500 now, I think our healthcare system works much more effectively. I think we do far fewer unnecessary procedures here in, uh, in New Hampshire. But the problem is that uh, when the cuts come in the future, instead of saying, look, everybody should be at $8,000 per, per person per year, uh, what's going to happen is everyone's going to get cut. Did the president's bill help? Uh, it helped a lot on access. There's no question. You know, um, I have been uh, struggling for healthcare access in developing countries my whole life. Of course, I embrace the notion of uh, giving access to more more people. But that's just the first step. There are two more that are critical. And what we're trying to do here at Dartmouth, we've taken the Dartmouth Atlas work and turned it into what we call the Dartmouth Center for Healthcare Delivery Science. But right. that's engineering, the business school, the arts and sciences, and the medical school working together because that last part, once you have good therapy in the hands of good people, how you actually organize the delivery is so complicated that everyone needs to help to figure out how to do it effectively. Let me shift topics a little bit and put a challenge to you. You're the president of a liberal arts college, sure. university. You have a medical school here sure. as well. Investor Peter Thiel has said, kids, I will give you $100,000. Don't go to school for two years. Go get this money instead. Yeah. Why is it worth it for them to spend $53,000 a year yeah. for a liberal arts education? Well, you know, uh, Mr. Thiel himself was a beneficiary of quite an elaborate education. And I think his approach might work for uh, you know, half a dozen or a couple dozen people, I think, that he, he sponsors. And there certainly are those people who uh, can benefit greatly from that approach. But that's not the real issue. The real issue is at community colleges, the completion rate is extremely low, much less than 50 percent. And even some of the all-access four-year colleges, the completion rate's really low. We have a crisis in higher education here in the United States. Places like Dartmouth, you know, um, if you want to understand the importance of liberal arts education, first of all, we think that there's no question that liberal arts uh, helps people to think deeply, broadly, and creatively. And uh, the countries that are most uh, uh, actively competing with us, China and Korea, they actually believe, believe the same thing. The Chinese are desperately trying to build liberal arts into their uh, higher education institutions. The South Koreans have come to me directly and asked if they could come hmm. and try to copy their pieces of it, because what they say is just that. Our folks are really good technically, but we'd like them to be more creative. We'd like to invent them to invent a new technology that no one's thought of yet, and they believe that a liberal arts education can help them do that. All right, well, President Kim, thank you very much. Thank you for your hospitality. We are obviously going to be here all night long. Uh